You know, we don't usually make videos talking about one player who exists on an NHL roster and who many people believe is an NHL player. And I say player like that because I don't know if Dennis Chalowski is really somebody that most people would consider a legit NHL player, which is why we're talking about him here today, because there is some uncertainty, I would say, with the overall long-term project that is Dennis Chalowski. And I wanted to make a video about this here today just to kind of feel the market. You know, my goal out of this video is to get your sentiments on this player because obviously as Red Wings fans, everybody who is in Detroit, who cheers for the Red Wings, etc., we're all looking towards the future. We want to see Dylan Larkin and Philip Zadina in their primes with Moritz Sider on the power play and the penalty kill with a whole bunch of other guys, Lucas Raymond, Joe Valeno, etc doing their things too. And a guy like Dennis Chalowski is, in theory, supposed to be a part of that. So I want to get your thoughts on the overall situation that is Dennis Chalowski's long-term development, because Chalowski, who was a Detroit Red Wings top draft pick out of the 2016 NHL entry draft, taken with the pick from the Arizona Coyotes that was acquired in the Pavel Datsuk trade. We spoke about that in a previous video. He's 22 years old today, 6 feet tall, 194 pounds, left-handed D-man, but he plays on the right side, and... He's in a spot where, for two years in a row, he started the season out in Detroit, but he ended it off in Grand Rapids because, well, let's just say his assertiveness, I guess. Yeah, that's the word we're going to use. Assertiveness is not where it should be. We have ourselves some stuff to talk about with Dennis Chalowski back from May when Steve Eiserman himself went over and he was like, yeah... I ended up having a conversation with Dennis Chalowski because I wanted to talk about what exactly it is his problems are. Chalowski is a gifted skater, but his lack of assertiveness has been enough of a problem that GM Steve Eiserman has met personally with Chalowski to discuss the issue. If there was a way to distill Joe Hickett's swagger, Chalowski would benefit from a shot. Hickett's on the flip side has fallen on the defensive depth chart because he isn't an NHL caliber skater. This is what Sean Horkoff says, Red Wings Director of Player Personnel. I think it's fair to say that the area that Chalowski needs to focus on is his defensive play. The physicality, just the overall intensity it takes to defend in the NHL. I think he's a young player that has survived on offense his whole life. And now when he's playing, he gets exposed a little bit on the defensive side of the rink. Having said that, we've made it abundantly clear to him, and he's aware of it, and he's working on it. And down in Grand Rapids, we had seen some growth in that area from him. So he's working on it, and he is getting better. But, with the way his development has gone on, is it now time to start worrying about the long-term projection and the development of Chalowski long-term? Because if you go over what Dennis Chalowski has done throughout his career, you can kind of take a look at the different pieces and connect them piece by piece. Chalowski was drafted in 2016, back when he was playing for the Chilliwack Chiefs in the BCHL. He was under a point per game there as a left-handed defender. And I'm going to say this right here. BCHL hockey, hey, if you're a defender who can get points, my gosh, you're going to be great. This was a guy who, at his best, was able to make some very good passes, was able to headman the puck himself, snap the puck towards the goal because, hey, for some reason, He's got a shot, man, that he uses once in a while. Use that on the power play sometimes earlier in the year with the Red Wings. But at his best, Chalowski was a guy who was exhibiting offense, and he did that a lot. And his skating, his overall tool set, it was great. However, the next season after that, he went over to St. Cloud State University. He was at under half a point a game, 12 points, 36 games. But he didn't stick around long with the St. Cloud State University hockey program. Now, you can make up your own reasons why he went pro so early, because afterwards, he did spend some time in the WHL. He was with Prince George, then he went over to Portland, and then he went over back to the Grand Rapids Griffins, where he didn't suit up for anything. But these development paths are kind of weird. It's very difficult in my mind to justify the idea of signing a guy who was already in college to a pro contract just to have him play in the WHL of all places. And he played in the AHL. It's just that afterwards, we did see him go down over to the major junior level in Canada. The next season, though, he played with the Red Wings, 16 points, 52 games played, but 12 points and 25 games played with the Grand Rapids Griffins. We saw some of those 
let's just say assertiveness issues come into play in year one. And then in year two, spoiler alert, we saw them again. 36 games played, 8 points. 30 games played with the Griffins, 13 points down there. It's his overall assertiveness, man. Dennis Chalowski is the guy who you know hasn't really needed to develop that defensive side of his game throughout his entire career. He's so passive once in a while in the D zone. You're just like, come on, go body the guy, remove him from the play. No, it's been the back of the net. Come on. It's so weird watching Dennis Chalowski out there because you know he has so much raw talent and the tools. This was a first round pick for a reason, man. We've seen it before when he's at his best, he's sending out breakout passes and he's shooting the puck and he's skating it up himself and he's getting by guys as a weird left-handed guy playing on the right defensive side. But... In order to play in the NHL, you need to be able to play both sides of the ice. That's it, plain and simple, especially if you're a defenseman. So, going into the long term, actually, you know what? Screw that. Going into the short term, the next year's worth of play is going to be very, very weird for Dennis Chalowski and the overall development path for him. We already spoke about what Steve Eiserman said, where he was like, yeah, I sat him down, I talked about him, we need to get this guy better. But taking a look at where exactly the Red Wings are in terms of their overall decor next season, Stahl, DeKaiser, Nemeth, Stetcher, Merrill, Biega, Hronik, you have so many right side guys already, one of them you just acquired in free agency in Stetcher, that who exactly do you take out to put in a Chalowski? And even still, you have Cider too, who's a guy who many people believe could challenge for a spot, if not just break the walls down and make the Red Wings full time. On the left side, you have Mark Stahl, whom you acquired in a recent trade with the Red Wings in order to get assets. And you're not dethroning that guy. You're not playing him in the press box or sending him down or whatever. You're using Stahl. Iserman said he wants to ice a team. Hey, a guy like Stahl helps you ice a team. That's it. Plain and simple. Veteran leadership presence. A nice, stable guy to at least do some positive things once in a while who just doesn't live up to the contract, which is why he got traded in the first place. But the Red Wings are in a spot where who even knows if there's room for Chalowski to be a top six defender on this team with your new additions in Troy Stetcher, John Merrill, Mark Stahl, and you have the cider guy too who might crack a spot. Who knows? So, for Dennis Chalowski, unless you're dethroning a DeKaiser, which you're not doing, unless you're dethroning Nemeth, which you're probably not doing either, what exactly does the short term hold? And furthermore, going into the long term, by the time Cider is full-time on this team, what's going to happen? Troy Stetcher is signed two years, so you're not really going to do anything while he's around. And you still have the other prospects who have themselves some very good talent as well. Albert Johansson, you have Andy Tuomisto. There are some very good defensive prospects in the Red Wings system who are going to be valuing spots down the line. So for Chalowski, is it fair to say that he's in one of the weirdest spots for the Red Wings in terms of their overall long-term development? And I want you to talk to me in the comments below what you think, because I was just kind of looking at it myself saying, you know, next year and into the long term, I just don't really know about the fit. Like, is it going to work, you know? This guy has been up and down so much, and the reason he's even being sent down is because of the same reasons. This guy is not as assertive as he could be. This guy lays down on the defensive back rush. He doesn't really do the best that he could, and the effort level. It's just not really there in his own zone or on the defensive side of things. Offensively, sure, he's a talented guy. He's lived his entire hockey life being that talented offensive threat from the back end. It's why he was under a point per game in the BCHL. It's why he was a very good offensive defenseman in the WHL when he was there. But who knows? Defensive play is very much valued, and you could argue, okay, that's kind of why he didn't even stick around in St. Cloud State back when he was a freshman in college. They wanted him to go back. But instead, he went to the WHL, where his offensive talent just absolutely shined. You take a look at his WHL numbers, you say, darn, man, this guy was a point per game with the Prince George Cougars and with the Portland Winterhawks. That's great. But even those offensive numbers have not translated from the WHL to the NHL. And, you know, it makes sense why. It's just a talking point here. So, talk to me in the comments what your opinion is on Dennis Chalowski. Where does he go from here? Is he an AHL for lifer kind of guy? Do you see him getting better? Because he is a 2016 draft pick. He's 22 years old at the moment. So, there still is room for him to get better. It's just... The development that we have seen hasn't really shown any consistent, positive uptrends. Now, my last hope is that Steve Eiserman's talk with the guy where he was literally getting a meeting from one of the best NHL players of all time would have been able to at least strike something in him where he was like, okay, 
Kind of got to work on my assertiveness now. Kind of got to work on stepping up in the defensive zone, actually cutting off guys and actually allowing myself to get involved in the play a little bit more. Who knows if that's the case? I hope it is, but again, talk to me in the comments if you think I've enjoyed this video. So that trolls is 99. And bye. <laughs>